Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today microbiology topic on test for novobiosin susceptibility. Table of content includes objective, principle, requirements, procedure, result and interpretations, quality control, precautions, applications and lastly limitations. Let's begin with a brief introduction of Novobiosin. Novobiosin is an antibiotic of an aminocomerin family that is produced by the actinobacterium Streptomycin nevarius and inhibits the production of bacterial DNA. Novobiosin suppresses DNA transcription by interacting with the DNA gyrase enzymes gyrase B subunit. Additionally, DNA topoisomerase 4 activity is observed to be inhibited by it. The antibiotic was first suggested as a treatment for infection brought on by gram-positive cocci. When other antibiotics proved ineffective for treating Streptococcus aureus infections, it was authorized as a recommended therapy option in September 1964. However, the FDA banned its use as a therapeutic measure in 2009 due to its toxicity and diminished efficacy. Even though novobiosin isn't used for treatment, clinical laboratories still utilize it in the novobiosin susceptibility test to identify and separate distant strains of Staphylococcus. Novobiosin is susceptible to Staphylococcus aureus and the majority of the coagulase negative Staphylococci species described as pathogen, while Staphylococcus saprophaticus is inherently resistant to it according to research by Coles and Stetlerfer from 1975. To distinguish Staphylococcus saprophaticus from other coagulase negative Staphylococci species, they developed a novobiosin susceptibility test using this theory. Let's dive into the objective of this test. To first and foremost distinguish Staphylococcus saprophaticus from other coagulase negative Staphylococci, particularly Staphylococcus epidermitis. Novobiosin susceptible coagulase negative staphylococci and novobiosin resistant coagulase negative staphylococci are divided into two categories. Now let's head to the principle of novobiosin susceptibility test. Novobiosin disrupts the synthesis of bacterial DNA, which prevents bacterial replication and colony growth. Novobiosin is effective against a variety of staphylococcus species, including coagulase negative staphylococci and coagulase positive staphylococci. The most prevalent staphylococci pathogens are Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus saprophaticus, Staphylococcus epidermitis, Staphylococcus hominis, and Staphylococcus homoleticus. In the coagulase negative staphylococci group, Staphylococcus saprophaticus and Staphylococcus epidermitis are the most prevalent urine pathogens. Except for Staphylococcus saprophaticus, all of these pathogens are responsive to novobiosin. Based on this antimicrobial sensitivity pattern, we can quickly distinguish Staphylococcus saprophaticus from other widespread coagulase negative Staphylococci. Kindly show your support to this channel by subscribing. Now let's head to the requirements of this test. First is the culture media. The novobiosin susceptibility test is often carried out on Milan Hilton agar or blood agar. However, other forms of popular culture can be utilized. What is the preparation of MHA plate? According to the manufacturer's instructions, weigh the proper quantity of MHA powder or the media components and combine it with necessary amount of water in a conical flask or glass bottle. Stir thoroughly with a magnetic stirrer or by hand, then heat to boiling to completely dissolve the agar in the water. The flask or bottle should be autoclaved at 121 degrees Celsius and 15 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes and then cool to between 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Pour about 25 ml of the MHA into a sterile petri dish, glass plate with a 10 cm diameter, make around 4 mm thickness of the media in the petri plate. Keep the media at room temperature to allow for full solidification. Store at freeze at 4 degrees Celsius for up to use of 4 weeks. Then for the preparation of blood agar plate. 
In a conical flask or glass bottle, combine the recipient volume of water with the appropriate amount of blood agar base powder or the media components in an accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Stir thoroughly with a magnetic stirrer or by hand, then heat to boiling to completely dissolve the agar in the water. The flask or bottle should be autoclaved at 121 degrees Celsius and 15 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes and then cool to between 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. In the flask containing the blood agar base, slowly add 5%, 5 to 10% volume by volume sterile defibrinated blood. Blood of a sheep is preferable while stirring continuously. Mix well so that the blood disintegrates into the medium equally. And then pour about 25 ml of the blood agar into the sterile petri plate, a glass dish with 10 cm diameter and let it harden properly by allowing it to sit at room temperature. You can store the blood agar plate in a freeze at 4 degrees Celsius for up to use to 2 to 4 weeks maximum. Reagents required are Novobiocene antibiotic disc 5 microgram blood from defibrinated sheep for blood agar plate preparation, standard McFarland 1 McFarland and 0.5 McFarland suspension. Composition for the requirement of McFarland is 1% anhydrous baronium chloride solution and 1% sulfuric acid solution. For the preparation of 1 McFarland standard suspension, Add 9.9 .9 ml of 1% sulfuric acid and 0.1 ml of 1% barium chloride solution to a clean, transparent test tube. And for the preparation of 0.5 McFarland standard suspension, add 9.95 .9 ml of 1% sulfuric acid and 0.05 ml of 1% barium chloride solution to a clean, transparent test tube. The equipment you will need for this test: battery plates forceps, waiting machine, autoclave, Bunsen burner, sterile test tubes, micro pipette, inoculating loop or cotton swab, personal protective equipment and other general laboratory materials. The test spectrum in consideration are gram positive catalase, positive cocci in a cluster or short chain, staphylococcus species, Staphylococcus aureus and Saprophaticus. If this content is very helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe. Procedure of Novobiocene Susceptibility Test Both the Harvard Techniques which uses blood agar plate and the kyber Brower Disc Diffusion Technique which uses an MHA plate may be used to do this test. Number 1. Make a test bacterial suspension in a sterile test tube with a sterile distilled water or triptych soy broth and turbidity equivalent to McFarland number no. 1 if you are using blood agar plate. If you are using MHA, prepare a bacterium suspension in a sterile test tube with a sterile distilled water or septic soy broth that has a turbidity of 0.5 McFarland units. Number 2. The bacteria solution should be inoculated in agar plates using either a cotton swab or an inoculating loop. For blood agar plate, Streak, spread one area of the plate in one direction to inoculate. In MHA, inoculate by streaking, spreading in three directions uniformly all over the plate. Number 3. Allow the suspension to stick to the plate and dry while keeping it upright for 5 to 10 minutes. Number 4. A Novobiocene antibiotic disc should be applied to the site of inoculation using sterile false sap and it should be gently pressed to achieve adhesion. Number 5. Overnight, incubate the infected plate in an aerobic environment at 35 degrees Celsius, 18 hours for MHA and 24 hours for blood agar plate. After the incubation time, watch for the development of a zone of inhibition around the antibiotic disc novobiocene and then measure the zones diameter. Now let's get to the result and interpretation of Novobiocene Susceptibility Test. For blood agar plate, Herbert method, the results are if the zone size is greater or equal than to 12 mm, it means it is sensitive to Novobiocene. 
whereas if it is less than 12 mm it means it is resistant to novobiocene for mha kyber bauer disk diffusion method zone size which is greater than 16 mm it means it is sensitive to novobiocene whereas zone size equal or less than 16 mm it means it is resistant to novobiocene if the test phenococcus species is isolated from a urine sample and it is coagulase negative and novobiocene resistant reported as staphylococcus saprophyticus however it doesn't conform the bacterium as staphylococcus saprophyticus and must not be used if the bacterium are isolated from any samples other than urine quality control checks are staphylococcus aureus sensitive to novobiocene which produces an antibiotic resistant zone of around 22 mm around the novobiocene disc is utilized as a positive control staphylococcus saprophyticus resistant to novobiocene is utilized as a negative control to valvling an antibiotic resistant zone of 15 mm around the novobiocene disc novobiocene susceptible sensitive staphylococci are staphylococcus aureus Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus homoleticus, Staphylococcus hominis, Staphylococcus capitis, Staphylococcus sacroleticus, etc. Novobiocene resistant staphylococci are Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Staphylococcus clausii, Staphylococcus corni, etc. Let's see the precautions we must adhere. Work in a sterile location, adequately sterilize the media before use wear the appropriate ppe and abide by all laboratory safety regulations if the temperature is beyond 45 degrees celsius avoid pouring blood onto a molten blood agar base before the molten media's temperature falls below 40 degrees celsius pour the media into the battery plates in a sterile area to prevent clumps from forming when pouring the media make sure there is no air bubbles Place the plates in a sterile area such as biosafety cabinet where they can solidify. Leave the lid of the plate slightly open so that vapor may escape and water droplets won't fall on a solidified media. Before using, let the agar plates fully firm to guarantee complete solidification. Prepare it at least 6 hours or 1 day before usage. Never put media in a refrigerator to solidify. Always let it do so at room temperature. Place the disc 25 mm or so from the plate's edge. If using more than one antibiotic disc, space them apart by at least 25 mm. Applications of novobiocene susceptibility test. It is used for the purpose of distinguishing Staphylococcus saprophyticus from other pathogenic coagulase negative Staphylococcus. During urine culture, distinguishing staphylococcus epidermidis and staphylococcus saprophyticus and lastly limitations of novobiocene susceptibility test staphylococcus saprophyticus can only be identified using this technique as a conforming one if the bacteria are isolated from a urine sample to confirm the species of the bacteria additional biochemical tests are required Due to the fact that it is a culture-based process, it takes longer and uses various ingredients and needs. A false positive and false negative result has a high probability. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you.